Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today, and welcome to what I think I'm going to call this series Drip Feed. Do let me know in the comments if you think that's a good one. Uh, today, we're talking about Bioshock, which just leaked last week, uh, courtesy of my good friend Colin Moriarty. Colin, how are you doing? I'm well. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Thank you. Awesome. So the goal of this series is to extend the conversation beyond the leak, really bridge that gap between creator and what I would say is some journalistic work here. It's great to see the king is back. <laughs> um, and so, you know, what I want to start off with is um, citing the source. You you reported on uh, sacred symbols in the most recent episode that uh, Bioshock Immortal would take place in an Antarctic city called Borealis in the 1960s. And you documented what I thought was a really interesting story on how you dug up this leak, and it was pretty insightful. Um, and I know one point you mentioned was like, you're like, oh, I'm not really sure on some things here. Uh, afterwards, VGC had come out and corroborated your report. So are you feeling a little bit more confident now that the dust has settled a bit? Yeah, definitely. I don't think I would have gone live with it if I wasn't confident. I, I think I explained sure. when I was at IGN and I was breaking stories, there were definitely stories I broke with one source, but I wasn't comfortable doing that unless I was positive and usually those stories were like layoff stories or whatever where someone would email me or message me and be like i just got laid off i don't really need any corroboration for that right i believe you but for this it was funny because i heard this first heard this rumbling a couple months ago in fact i reached out to you and asked you if you had heard anything and to ask you about who i might speak with at 2k because i really don't right. consider myself a journalist anymore i, I break mm -hmm. stories like i definitely i broke the demon souls ps5 story i broke the bloodborne Bloodborne 2 thing that will come to fruition, but I generally don't, I just don't exist in that world anymore too much. Sure. And as I kind of dip my toes back into it, because I feel like people are asking me why I hear things and don't share them. So I kind of took that to heart. I was like, <laughs> I don't really know. I guess I kind of am a little getting a little greedy where I just don't want to do the legwork anymore because I do, I'm a podcaster now and not a journalist, but we can do right. both. And so it was, um, it was cool to just be able to put this out there for people and get people excited about what I think is going to be a a pretty good game so yeah yeah you you mentioned how they had a lot of time to work on this um it had been rebooted seemingly at one point and i want to know because based off what you had said and we'll have this answer soon enough with the game awards impending um you know how long do you think this has been in development for um because i know they announced this in 2019 right and right. they said that kelly gilmore was at the head of all of this i remember jason schreier reported it was in development years before that so um this will be kind of an interesting point in our conversation one thing I dug up when I had reported on Bioshock on my channel uh, was some job listings that I had found. One was for an end game design lead, which was looking for post narrative systems. There was another for a senior multiplayer designer, and these were posted under 2K Novato before they rebranded re that studio to Cloud Chamber. So, mm. do you think this stuff, based on what you know, was was pre or post reboot? Uh, this 1960s Antarctic city. It's post. It's the way the game is now. I heard, mm -hmm. I didn't put this in our podcast, but I'll tell you that a source who I trust that would know some, mm -hmm. you know, things like this told me that what that source had said, heard years ago during the original booting of the, of the Bioshock 4 project or whatever was that it took place in a volcano. And mm -hmm. now in seeing the leak of the logo, which I never saw, but the logo of the two cities, I was thinking yeah. maybe there is some sort of polarity at play with the fire and the ice and all this kind of stuff, but I don't know anything about that. That was just what I was told by one person who said that that was true before they rebooted it. So my assumption is, you know, Infinite comes out 2013 and then you have the DLC support. So let's say 2014, everyone gets back. Irrational basically splits up and they're now ghost story games. And it's funny because in reporting that story, I had just noted off the cuff saying, by the way, they're you know, they have to get this right because they're publishing Ken Levine's game too. And, right, and some people right. reported that as news. And I'm like, that's not news. No, I mean, Ghost Story while, owns, just, goes to, Take Two owns so that. Long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So some people not keep keeping up with the plot, but nonetheless, they know, my sources say that they, they know that this has to be done right or not at all. And so right. um, the expectations are heavy. And I have some other details about, like, I, I've, I've heard that it's supposed to be at least parts of it a little bit more uh, burial at sea, like where you see mm, a city news. at that's not yet fucked up. Apparently, yeah. at least part of it. So you're not seeing Rapture. Certainly, Rapture and Bioshock Two is way gone. But Bioshock mm -hmm. One, Rapture is decaying, and then obviously you see, you're in Columbia when it's starting to go down. But apparently, this might be a little different from that point of view too. So we'll see. 
Right. Because I, I remember when you mentioned in your show that um, these stories are interconnected and um, there was a bit of nerves. The reason that this was on lockdown and you mentioned you, you talked to other journalists and like, hey, if you heard anything on this and the worst feelings when you do that and they go like, oh, I don't really know anything mm-hmm. on that. <laughs> because I've had that with the uh, with Kotor remake and a couple other things with Xbox. You're like, oh, shit. Well, what now? Um, now, with that interconnection there, do you think the nerves come from that story intertwining rather than actually the fear of like, hey, we're also publishing Ken Levine's game and like, hey, we need to get this right. Uh, because I'm sure, again, we'll we'll have that answer soon enough with what you said was a 2022 release. But where do you think specifically the the heart of this, this nervousness from this studio stems from? Because it reminds me of sort of what I've reported on Aspire with, um, with KOTOR Remake is like, I've heard a very similar story there, like under wraps, letting people know we're doing it, but otherwise like they knew they know they need, they need to get this right. Same thing I've heard with Bioware and Dragon Age four, like they want an insanely good score for that game, like that type of stuff. Yeah. I've, I've been told that <laughs> take two is not pleased. And, um, I think a lot of it, yeah, comes from, you want to control the message. If you, if you have the initiative, it's like, uh, I'm a, I love chess and you know, white and black, right. And mm. white always goes first. And so white has the initiative until the black, takes the initiative or white gives up the initiative and you can't keep it forever so you have to play your pieces right when you have the initiative and i think that just by opening and going early and going first without anyone knowing anything it's just a massive advantage to you and right. so i'm not surprised that 2k didn't reach back to me when i reached out to them and all that and and i don't know that they'll even hit 2022 but what i was told and i guess like you said well this will play out i was told that it won't be at vgas but was supposed to be mm-hmm. like that was kind of the plan originally we'll see how that all plays out but um, my one con- my one concern is that the game sounds kind of big, and I and I'm just getting that from even mm-hmm. what you're saying with your uh, reporting on job listings and all of that. I just hope they don't lose sight of the fact that it still needs to very much be a linear, yeah, twenty hour game. I don't know that anyone wants more than that from Bioshock, and I think that they're kind of going overboard if they do any more than that. Yeah, I mean that's the thing is the the job listings again really strongly suggested that because. Um, they, they were doing a lot of PR speak. I remember when I was reporting on it, I was, I was actually sifting through my old content on it. And in 2019, when uh, Kelly Gilmore was doing some interviews uh, about the studio, you know, the way they were speaking was very PR driven. Like, we're, we're starting this now. Uh, like, there wasn't any history there. But Jason Schreier's reporting had illuminated what was really going on behind the scenes. And even job listings for 2K Nevada, like, they dug themselves into their hole publicly and privately where we knew this has sort of been messy for a while. And and again, when yeah, when you look at some of the job listings, like an end game design lead and a multiplayer designer, you got to wonder what they're up to with with this game on that note. And if that's where the nerves also stem from. But certainly, I mean, I think about like, there are things that happen and decisions that are made based entirely on the reaction to other products. And I think that they want to at least have the, the initiative to say, again, to say, before you get crazy because it kind of reminds me of fallout 76 a little bit where they really had to over message and over market that because we're like you guys are being crazy and maybe we were or weren't being but we still have a fallout we still have elder scrolls and all these things and they had to kind of over communicate that but if you lose that narrative then you know if as as the political saying goes if you're explaining you're losing and i think that they're just ready to to well they'll be ready to say something probably in the next six months and i know there's some skepticism on if the game will be ready or not but some people are wondering like what could even be taking so long for a game that really should just be 15 or 20 hours long. And I'll just remind them that Bioshock infinite was completely tortured oh, when it was God. developed. Oh, God, too. Yeah. So it, not that Ken Levine is involved in this cause he's not Ken Levine's a, a friend of mine. He's a, an incredibly exacting person to work for. I think everyone that n- knows that about him. Um, mm-hmm. So imagine making a, a game in that, in that image without him and with the expectations that you're going to fulfill this legacy, I don't want to overstate it, but Bioshock's widely considered one of the greatest narrative games ever. And yeah. it's going to be very difficult for them to to do that. But And I'm interested in the many lighthouses and stuff, but I'm interested to see how they they do mm-hmm. intertwine it and um, where it falls on the... And, and maybe we go back to Rapture and maybe we go back to Columbia. Like, who knows? I bet yeah, that's, dope there. <laughs> yeah, it would be sick, but it's also one of those things that you get. I get a little nervous about because as a, as a huge fan of the series, it's that interconnection that's like both... I think tantalizing, but, but also like that could be the the poison, right? That sure. could be the, the thing that hurts the whole series, right? Is how it tries to do something creative with what infinite setup or what Bioshock one set up, you know, it just, 
it can get messy really fast. And so I thought I thought that was a, a really interesting point you had made. Uh, what's also neat is is uh, I think this got overlooked a little bit is when you said it takes place in the 60s, um, this is different from Infinite, which was in 1912, mm -hmm. where Bioshock 1 and 2 are in the 60s. So I'm imagining there will be a similar atmosphere and feel in Borealis, even if the visuals are different. And um, do you expect this to be kind of along the lines of what we've seen with each of the other entries, where it's this isolated society, like seceding, kind of doing their own thing is that the vibe you got yeah there's yes first of all and there's some there's some speculation that the the connection to rapture might be very intimate and immediate it might i think people have been kind of or like the way i've been reading some people's speculation is that you imagine not that it would be the same but after nazi germany people escaped to south america to like argentina and stuff through what were mm. called rat lines and this happened over several years and then new society sprung up like expatriates, right? And the uh, the same thing might have happened with Rapture. And so there's some people speculating that when Rapture fell, maybe people got out of there, not the Splicers, but normal people got out of there and founded this new place. And maybe there's something to do with Andrew Ryan mm -hmm. there and all of this. But it, the, the beauty of it is that I would have never guessed how Infinite connected to the original Bioshock. And therefore, I, I could never even imagine how this might right. connect and that's what's exciting too my hope is and i don't I, i'll say this straight up i don't i don't talk to ken levine about this stuff and i don't know what he feels or what he thinks about any of this or if he's involved but my hope is that because i don't even want to put him on the spot like when i have friends in the industry i don't even go there you know right um but my hope is is that they've been smart enough to consult him and my real hope is is that he ultimately wrote at least the bible or something for the for the story yeah you'd hope you know I don't know how overarching it would end up becoming, but if, if he could hit up a executive producer role, you know, sort of the overseeing, the checking in, the, is this okay, Ken? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is, that type of thing, or no, it's not. I just worried, you know, because Bioshock Immortal is, is to me, it's the same language we heard about, say, Halo Infinite, uh, Assassin's Creed, I forgot the name of it, but like these endless things, right? And when I looked at the job listings, which to me suggested like live service elements, I'm hoping that, they also understand one of the biggest strengths of Bioshock and pretty much any narrative game is is the conclusion. Like it ends, it's over. Definitely. Um, but I also agree. that opening, that openness was handled differently back then. Like it was open narratively where they could do a bunch of entries, but it wasn't open in the sense of endless content. Like it would it would finish at one point. And I'm hoping that Bioshock Immortal isn't codenamed for something like that. Like this endless game that keeps going because to me that sounds less appealing. Yeah, that's not Bioshock, and, and certainly if not. I'll be really bummed if it is that but i didn't hear mm -hmm. that that's what it is but i also didn't hear that that's not what it's not so okay i, I hate double negatives but there because there are more it's things i know off the record but i'm not i'm not gonna i'm gonna honor the the request of the um uh, yeah that I one source that. but i will say that i question whether it was wise to even go back to bioshock at all or if we even really needed to or mm -hmm. if the the wise decision might have been to wait until levine was done with whatever he's doing next and maybe wanted to come back. Um, yeah. I, I just, sometimes you got to leave good enough alone mm -hmm. and I don't know, man, it's dangerous. It, it's super dangerous. Like I can't speak to what I think the quality will be or not too. Or right? keeping in mind sure. that this is a totally unproven studio. You know, you yeah. don't know who the hell these guys are at all. So, yeah, it's not even like Aspire where like, at least, you know, they did ports with mm -hmm. the remake. Right. And so we also had that leak over on GeForce now, which stated that there was some ray tracing addition for Bioshock and you wonder what that's going to do. And, and obviously with Ken cooking on ghost story games for years now, since Irrational got condensed down to that little studio, uh, when they're ready to show off their thing, if those two coincide, it could kind of be that perfect storm for one of these two games, like I, I think of the Outer Worlds and Fallout 76's uh, Fallout First subscription where they announced Fallout First and then the Outer Worlds came out and people were like, oh, I'm going to fucking go play the Outer Worlds. Right. Like this is exactly what I was looking for. I, I, I do worry for this new Bioshock game that if if Ken Levine's game's in any close proximity to it, it can be really dangerous for them because like they'll just go there. I think right so away. too. I think so too. So yeah. we'll see. I mean, you know, well, I don't know what their plan is. But I look at Take Two as a pretty capable publisher. They're not stupid. Mm. Um, they're also not really, they don't always milk everything either. So I feel like maybe by going, like they knew to walk away from Mafia, right? Mafia, everyone knows that that uh, 
Hangar 13 wanted to make Mafia 4, but they ended up not doing it. And I think they know when to just say, like, nah, we could make Bully and we could make a Grand Theft Auto every year and we could do all these, but we don't really do that. We do that with NBA. We're going to start doing that with golf and all of that. But mm. so I think my hope is, is that Strauss, Zelnick and those guys are deliberate enough to say, like, we, we're going back to Bioshock because we really think we have something here. It's not obviously there's a massive financial imperative, but that can't be yeah. it because yeah. you're really risking messing things up and i i feel like the timing of the bioshock collection on ps4 and xbox one which was 2016 i believe was probably not intention not unintentional if the original cycle was going to have the game come out in 2017 and 2018 and then they rebooted it so yeah so yeah, right. i think you can look in and read into things like that as well and as far as the g-force leaks are concerned that leak is clearly real so however you want to read into that bioshock rtx whatever leak is up mm -hmm. to you but it's clearly something because everything on that list is something real yeah so I don't know. We'll yeah. see what happens. It's exciting, nonetheless. Yeah, I agree, because I hope they do just touch up those games visually in case anything botches, because I'm always a big fan of like preserving and enhancing what was originally there in, in whatever ways you can, um, because I, I think it's something like Dead Space, which, you know, they kind of skipped Dead Space 1 for FPS boost, and you can tell me whatever you want, but I look at how they got 2 with FPS boost, they got 3 with FPS boost, they left 1 to the wayside, and EA announced like a, a remake with EA Motive, and I'm like, oh, okay. Because you don't want people to go play the original right, when exactly. they should just make the original the best thing it could possibly be. So if they just do this as a free update or whatever, we have no idea what it'll be or it'll be a remake. That would be also very intimidating, I imagine, for any studio to undertake. Um, but yeah, man, I, I just hope that um, we see the originals preserved in the right way. And otherwise, unless you have anything more that you'd like to add here, I think we've covered all the bases of what you discussed and all that good stuff. Yeah, what's funny. Yeah, I'll have more to say probably next year. Um, okay. But I have it's funny because I have a t another totally unrelated 2K re 2K related leak <laughs> that I'm going to talk about on Sacred this this weekend. Man, they're not they're gonna they're love not you. gonna be happy with me. <laughs> they're gonna love you. It's totally happenstance, but I mean, whatever it is, what it is. Yeah, but, um, absolutely. Yeah. So I appreciate you having me, though. Thank you for inviting me. Of course, my pleasure. Thank you so much for joining me for for making these episodes possible. Because literally, it's it's not me. I just get to pick your yours your brain. I got to pick Jeff Grubb's brain. We'll have both of you back at some point, I'm sure. So uh, it's just been it's been great to talk to you on this. And uh, for those of you who are new here, just. Uh, keep a lookout for potential leaks that we could maybe do this more with. Of course, I need to have some fanship for the series. It's a lot easier to talk Bioshock than like some random GTA game or something. So, Khan, appreciate you. Um, Thank you. I'm sure many people already are aware, but if they aren't and they want to hear more from you, where can they find you? Yeah, you can just Google or go, you know, find Last Stand Media. That's Sacred Symbols, Defining Duke, which Maddie co-hosts, which is our Xbox show. Sacred Symbols is PlayStation. And then we do Knockback, which is uh, retro and nostalgia. So, yeah, we have uh, six pieces of content a week, and we're, we really appreciate your support. So thank you. Absolutely. So check that out. That'll be linked down below. I'm a part of it, so come on. Anyway, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in, Colin. Thank you again, and we will talk with all of you soon. Peace out.